Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be part two in my Hi-Fi amp build. What I want to do in this video is go through the schematic and explain some of the design choices I made. Uh, this circuit that I have come up with at this point is mostly kind of a hodgepodge of different things. I didn't quite find any specific circuit that seemed to kind of check all the boxes of specifically what I was wanting. So I had to kind of make my best do to track some of that down. So here are some of the influences. To start off with, I wanted to use a 12A7 ba based preamp, just again, because that's something that I'm more accustomed to. So I found this universal preamp and it had a pretty simple little schematic. And if you look at this right here, if you're familiar with tube amps, this is very, very uh, customary, very, very familiar. And so uh, I felt good about that. Um, and this is kind of what I used as the basis for my preamp. And then into the power section, I found this build log from this Blue Glow Electronics. Really, really awesome guy. So please uh, check out his channel. He's got some great videos. And he's got this KT88 single-ended tube amp build from 2018. That is a really, really cool amp. And he did a very, very thorough job building this thing out. And so this is his schematic. And now he used a little bit of a different preamp tube and so and he's biasing a little bit differently with an LED and his plate resistor is a little different but um, overall though this is kind of the circuit uh, the bones of the circuit that I am intending on using and so based upon those two I have come up with this now I've got my schematic broken down into three sections here at the bottom right here we've got the power supply and then we've got uh, two it's a stereo amp, so, so that's kind of the first main difference between this and my guitar amps, is we've got two stereo tracks. So this is kind of like your left audio, and then this is your right audio right here. So uh, definitely kind of a different way of looking at things. So let's just go ahead and start with the power supply. Um, now, this is, this is a schematic that's going to be designed to be sent for a board, so I will have some off-board wiring stuff that's not going to be pictured in the schematic so you know for example if we look at um, this power supply this is a more thorough um, I would say let, let's and we might even pull this thing up here this is going to be a more thorough presentation of a, of a proper power supply and schematic so you can see I'm going to be following all these same design principles right this is our 120 volts I'm going to use an IEC power input You've got a hot, the master ground, and then the neutral. Now your hot wire needs to be fused and switched, and then that enters into the primary lug of the power transformer, and then the other leg goes here to neutral. Now the primary reason for doing that is if you put the fuse and the switch on the other side, the 120 volts from the wall will be entering into the power transformer, but then on the exit of the power transformer, the connection will be broken. Well, if you set it up this way, where you have the, the fuse and the switch here on the hot side, then if the switch is off or if the fuse is broken, then zero voltage enters into the transformer. So it is a little safer way of setting up your primary side. Then on the secondary side, I will have my 6.3 filament, 6 volt filament winding. Now, I believe that my power transformer has a center tap, so I don't think I need to go with these... Uh, 100 ohm resistors, but I can do that and the filaments will be done off board I may at some point experiment with doing filaments on a PCB But typically with filament windings you want to tightly twist them and Be more kind of careful about how you position them relative to the tube sockets and everything else And so I want to give myself the freedom and flexibility to keep that off board then we ha will have the 5.3 volt winding, and this is kind of where we come in. So we're going to have four inputs from uh, the power transformer secondary into our PCB. So first we've got red one and red two, and um, that this is all coming off of the, let's see here, here we go. This is my power transformer. It's actually, I believe, a deluxe reverb power transformer. Uh, 330 volt primary 120 milliamp current. Um, I think those, I kind of determined that this should be a pretty good fix. And it, it gives you the schematic here. So that's where I'm getting these colors from, is from this schematic. So those are my two reds that are coming in to a 5Y3 tube rectifier. 
And uh, I chose that because with the voltages I'm getting here um, that we were just looking at, the, this is a 660 volt center tapped power transformer uh, that was slightly hot compared to what I was wanting. I'm intending to use 6v6s, so the 5v3 will help reduce my voltage a little bit, which is actually going to be desirable for my case. And then uh, coming out of the cathodes, we've got our two 5 volt uh, windings from the power transformer here on pins 2 and 8 and then pin 8 also feeds out to my B plus step down now right now I have four capacitors and three resistors and actually this is a choke not a resistor but um, I am not 100% committed to this but the way I've got it right now is you kind of want to give yourself options on the PCB because when it comes through, so for example, if I, I could choose to omit R21 and C5, if I didn't want to have that extra filtering, well, I can just simply not put those components onto the PCB and everything will continue to work just fine. Uh, but if I don't have it on the PCB and I decide I want to do that, then I don't have that option. But the main thing to think about here is uh, you want to think about current draw. So the power transformer has 120 milliamps of current and I believe I did the math that a 6v6 it usually draws about 45 milliamps and a 12ax7 or 12au7 or 12ay7 is about 1 milliamp so I have two 6v6s and one 12a something 7 so that's about 90 91 milliamps of current well a lot of that is being drawn here on these first two b plus stages specifically b plus one which is going to be feeding uh, to our output transformer and also the uh, plate of these power tubes. And so um, the uh, much of that current is going on here. But what that also means is that this first resistor, if I want to have it in place, that means that all of that 91 milliamps of current at what could be like, you know, 400, 450 volts DC is going to be um, flowing through this resistor. So, for example, again, if we've got, I think just this is kind of some quick and dirty math, but if we do 330 volts times 1.4, uh, that's kind of the root mean square. There, there's some math behind it, but basically what you're, if you're trying to figure out uh, what will happen if you have 330 volts on the primary, if it gets rectified, what will that be in DC? And that's where you do the this 462. I think that's kind of a rough estimate. Now, the 5Y3 will also drop the voltage, which I think is like maybe 30 to 50 volts. So let's just say that we get down to maybe 410 volts uh, of DC here at this point. So if we've got, um, let's do an Ohm's Law calculator. Okay, so if we have 91 milliamps voltage, I'm, I'm sorry, if we have 410 volts at 91 milliamps, the power rating there, comes out to 37 watts. Again, I believe that's just simply taking your voltage times current calculation. So in reality, you need a pretty beefy resistor, and that's why I've got this 100 or 50 watt resistor at 100 ohms. And really the purpose of this would be to just be providing an extra filtering stage. Uh, one of the differences between guitar tube amps and hi-fi tube amps is you want to have a little bit more filtering uh you know with a with a guitar tube amp you can get away with it being a little bit noisier or having a little bit extra uh, ripple but in a hi-fi situation you really do want it to be dead quiet and so that's the thought there is adding this extra stage just gives me a little bit more power filtering uh if i do choose want to do that you know when the reality is though that you do sacrifice some voltage now at 100 ohms it's not a lot of loss but uh, you also do need a pretty large beefy resistor, which is 50 watts, should be pretty good there. So then um, we get to our first B plus stage. This is going to send out to our to the to the power transformer and then to the plates. And then next uh, we've got this is a choke. This is another choke that I just happen to have on hand. This is a again from a deluxe reverb that I'm going to use. And then uh, lastly, we'll do this 4.7k dropping resistor. And it should set pretty good voltage for what I want to achieve in this amp. 
32 UF ca- filtering caps all throughout. Again, I've got those on hand, which are common in some of the tube amp builds that I've done. And 32 UF is maybe slightly on the higher side for a 5Y3 for the max capacitance at the first filtering stage. Uh, I, I want to say 20 UF is more of like the normal standard. But 32 isn't so terribly high that it's going to cause a problem. But I think if you would go to like 50 or 100 UF, that probably would cause some issues with your 5Y3. Um, whereas if you were doing a solid state uh, rectifier, then you could go for those higher capacitor ratings. But overall, that's my power supply, and that's how I'm thinking it through. Um, now, again, just some of the observations. If we go check out what uh, happened over here, you can see um, they have a larger choke that actually everything is going through, and they do have some larger value capacitors. And, and I just would say overall that the the power supply design, this is definitely more of a guitar-style power supply than a hi-fi amp power supply. I think in the hi-fi amps, you do tend to see uh, chokes and larger capacitors, but I, I think for my purposes, this is, should be pretty good. So now let's go into our, we've got a stereo uh, signal path here. Stereo is also just kind of a weird thing to think about. You need two output tubes, you need two output transformers. You know, there are two signals. And so just kind of an odd, a little bit of a different thing to, to deal with there. But uh, so overall, here's our input. And then we go into volume control. Now, I don't know for sure if I want or need a volume control. Typically on a hi-fi amp, this initial volume control needs to be a dual gang because we've got a, another one down here. And you do want that to be a pretty good... Um, like a well-manufactured specification dual gang potentiometer so that it is it is changing the volume of both of these channels evenly so you don't have one channel that's hotter than the other. You know, you could just put two separate volume controls, but then if they're even just the slightest little bit off, then your, your two signals are going to be different, um, which maybe some of that's a little bit unavoidable just due to tolerances, tolerances and such, but uh, that would be the idea here. Now, on my, so in, in practice, when I set this up, I will be feeding, this input will be coming from a Focusrite audio interface, and that does have a volume control. So I'm not sure if I should just use that or this, but I, I think I'm going to leave accommodation for it in case I want to use other, like a different uh, type of input. I'll just let it be a little more versatile. Then we come to our, this is our grid leak resistor and our grid stop resistor. It's going to help stabilize this input section. And again, pretty much basically directly copied here from this Blue Glow amp. On our cathode, we've got a 1.2K and a 33UF bypass cap. Now, this is all very much open to interpretation because right now I've got a 12AU7 slotted into this spot. I think a 12AX7, which would be your typical guitar tube, is probably going to be a little too hot, too gainy. So 12AU7 is going to be a lower gain tube. And so I also think that this plate resistor 100K and this cathode bias resistor 1.2K, this is really more suited for a 12AX7 that I would be more comfortable with. But the 12AU7 is probably going to require something different. Now, and also, I would say it might even be possible that it, I should I am not going to want to use a cathode bypass cap at all, because again, that will increase my gain. But you know, all, some of this, these two values here are really going to be open to interpretation. And one thing I may get into with this project is drawing load lines to figure out how I'm biasing this tube a little more technically. But we'll get into that maybe in a future episode. Got a 0.22 coupling cap. And then another 220K uh, grid leak and a 3K grid stopper coming into our 6V6. Nothing weird or different about that. Pretty straightforward. I got 390 ohms at 5 watts here to bias this sucker and then a 100 ohm or 100 UF bypass cap. Now, this 390 ohms might also be subject to change to bias the 6V6 correctly. But overall, this is basically like a fender champ uh, till this point. Next, though, we go to the plate, and now we have some negative feedback going along this path here with this 220K resistor. Now, this is, again, directly taken from the Blue Glow amplifier. I believe he called it shade feedback. 
And that the use of negative feedback is definitely more prevalent in hi-fi amps. So uh, hopefully uh, will be a nice touch there to make sure this isn't just a raging, overdriving guitar amp. And then, the, like I said, the other section goes to our output transformer. Now on the uh, screen here, we have 470 ohms, and then we have an ultra-linear ultra switch. Now my uh, output transformer that I am using is, um, let me see if I mentioned it in this thread yet. I believe I got some Edcore output transformers. And feeling pretty excited about that. Um, I'll, I'll have to pull them up later. But the Edcore power trans output transformers do have an ultra linear switch. And so on the bottom end of the switch, we do go straight to the B plus two. That would just be your standard uh, wiring. But then flipping the switch up, you go to the ultra linear tap on the output transformer. So overall, pretty uh, feeling pretty good and excited about all of that. But that's pretty much it as far as the schematic goes. Like I said, it's still pretty simple and straightforward. It's still kind of in the wheelhouse of what I'm doing. And I think it's going to produce a really nice result. So if you have any questions or comments or any inputs on how I can make it better, please leave them down in the comment section below. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.